Hello, welcome back, Nick Lenges, Comic Corner, Classic Slash Non Classic. This is episode number 262, I believe it is. I have oh, my list here. Yeah, 262 and double shot number 194. Okay? First up is the third trade uh, collecting stuff from the all new Ultimate from Marvel Now, and that's Extraordinary X Men Volume 1 X Haven. Collecting the first five issues of this ongoing series. You can kind of see this series as the flagship title of the three main X-Men group series. Just by the yeah, you got like um, a few spin-off series. I mean, the only, I mean, you got Old Man Logan here, who's got his own series. Uh, Laura, a.k.a. X-20, well, X-23, who's the current Wolverine now. She's got an ongoing series. There's also, you got at least, uh... Three for Deadpool. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Three. Gwenpool, I consider closely related to it. So, this is one of about, I'd say, three, six, seven. Probably about ten or eleven series, but but this is one of the group titles. Now, one thing I love about this series is that it features most of the known X-Men. I mean, you got... Well, you got teenage Jean Grey. Actually, she's more like about college age, about 18 or 19-ish. But kind of like young, you have young Jean Grey. You have the Rasputin siblings, uh, Magic and Colossus, Iceman, Nightcrawler, uh, Storm, and of course, Old Man Logan. From the Old Man Logan storyline, yeah, this is essentially the same character who appeared in the Old Man Logan storyline who appeared in the Old Logan miniseries for Secret Wars and the one who's got his own ongoing series right now. Now, his first story arc takes place right before this very series. Now, pretty much because of what happened with Scott Summers. Now, they mention in here that he was killed by the Inhumans because of something he did. Uh, I have honestly no idea what he did, and still... It's not been explained yet. Maybe after Apocalypse Wars, they might actually finally explain what the heck happened to Cyclops. Well, of course, it's present day Cyclops because we got Teen One in the all new X Men. But yeah, kind of like classic type X Men stories, but this series, with this one and all new X Men, you can kind of see like you have this one kind of be like a modern interpretation of what would be. Uh, the Chris Claremont style of writing, thanks to Jeff Lemire and Herbert de Ramos, uh, with Lemire on the writing and, Le and Ramos on the artwork. Now, pretty much, yeah, because mutants are like very much hated now. They're no longer hated and feared. They're just hated to the point where where Magic was was uh, getting uh, this this mutant out of India, and she basically had to avoid the Indian military. I am not kidding about this. She had to do that. And yeah, the whole Terry Timmons thing is sort of part of the background thing. Now, I get maybe trying to kill off mutants, like some of them basically. Um, of course, people try to kill off mutants for years, but my problem with the Terry Timmons is uh, not the whole thing of killing mutants. My problem with it is making mutants sterile. This is dumb. That's my only criticism of that. I mean, killing mutants, I don't have a really big problem with that. But the whole sterilization thing, I think that's really, really dumb. And that's basically Marvel saying, yeah, the X-Men can't have kids. Despite the fact Scott Summers already had a child. His name is freaking Cable. But that was before all this this happened. That means that Storm can't have kids. I mean, people want to see her get reunited with Black Panther because... Um, they had quite possibly, they were quite possibly one of the most popular couples in Marvel Comics. People love their relationship. But then, um, I think, I don't think it was Bendis. It might have been Loeb. Yeah, it might have been Loeb. Whoever wrote, uh, the final issue of Avengers vs. X-Men basically had them sort of had their marriage over. According to Black Panther, marriage was a null. That's why her hair is still kind of a mohawk, but not as much as before. And, of course, everybody's got new costumes. And Magic is basically wearing something similar to the costume she, would, she was wearing during the Bendis era. 
of the excellent books. Yeah, where she shows off a hot silver belly. Yeah, you can see you can show shows off her abdomen and her cleavage. Yep. She is by far the only female X-Men to do both. Yeah, show off her nice abdomen. Of course, Storm does the same thing too. Jean the mere hand, she's got a full body costume, but I do play some Birds of Rainbow's Forgiven Her costume that's kind of similar to that of her second costume she had back in the late 60s. I do praise him for doing that. Um, this lineup is a really good lineup. It gives all these characters something to do. Now, some of you are asking, okay, you have Iceman here. Okay, fine. Uh, we know that President Agent Grey is dead. Cyclops is dead. Apparently, Xavier is possibly alive now thanks to this. And Beast is over in Canadian Humans. And Angel. Angel's over in uh, Uncanny X-Men. Because this is something quite weird. But anybody... I don't, I don't know if anybody notices that much. But both Magneto... Well, Magneto has appeared in every single Uncanny X-Men number one. Angel has appeared in... Uh, from what I can tell about... I'd say... About three out of four. The only he missed was the previous one, was number one. But yeah, he's back in Kenny X Men uh, because he feels like it. Um, so the only reason why Iceman's here because he's been he's been back at the school since 2011, so the past five years. So he hasn't changed where his stance is. Uh, Storm has only been part of the Jean Grey Institute for Higher Learning, and uh, she's been part of it ever since uh, after Avengers vs X Men. Uh, Colossus. Uh, as far as I can tell, up until like a couple years ago, it took him a while before they come back to, to the Jean Grey School for Higher Learning. It took him like, I don't know, up until like a couple years ago for him to come back. I mean, he came back, excuse me, uh, just after Nightcrawler came back. Yep. And of course, Nightcrawler is missing his tail. He's not marrying some people that much. Um, his costume is okay, but if I wanted to give him a costume, why not put him back in the Chris Clamor costume? People love that costume. Storms, I don't have a really big problem with. Oh, Logan doesn't really have a costume, so yeah, fine. Magic, fine. She's an adult. She can she can show off her she can show off her belly and she she can show off more skin because she's an adult. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, Colossus still being freaking huge. Um, I don't think they show off her cost his costume very much in here that much. Bobby's. Well, his, this is the first costume of his where it actually covers his whole body and the ice doesn't cover his whole body either. So, But the story in here is that because of all the mutants being more hated than usual, that they have to move the Jean Grey School for Higher Learning. And where they put it? They put it in Limbo. I'm not kidding. The dimension that magic has been rolling for years, they put it there because that's the only safe place they can put it. Because it can't go, because it can't be any place on Earth, and they call the whole, and even though it's still called the Jingrey School for Higher Learning, the whole area they're in is the, um, uh, it's called X Haven. That's the name of the storyline, and there's a whole thing with Cyclops, and there's a speech in here at the end, which is kind of similar to happen all new X Men within the first story arc. But this series is just awesome. Um. And I recently, today, just recently read the most recent issue, issue 11. Still a really interesting issue. So, 11 issues in, this series is still really good. These is, these five issues are really good. Um, Logan is having some flashbacks um, of of what happened uh, during his own title. Uh, you, can, you also have Forge. Forge is a supporting character here. And Cerebro, or Cerebra... Is a re is a re re uh, reprogrammed Sentinel, yeah. That's essentially what Cerebro is, a reprogrammed Sentinel. Um, love the cast, love the storyline. It wraps up pretty nicely. Um, I look forward to basically whenever the next trade comes out. Um, so I get this book a nine out of ten. This book is just pure awesome. Now for the book that got a lot of that. It was on my list of basically the most underrated storyline of last year because it was buried under the advertisement of Secret Wars. Guardians of the Galaxy and 
X-Men, the Black Vortex. This tree contains the entire crossover, which contains the Guardians of the Galaxy and X-Men Black Vortex Alpha and Omega, both number ones. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, which is 24-25. Uh, Legendary Star-Lord, 9-11. through 11. All New X-Men, number 30-39. Guardians Team Up, number 3. Nova, Volume 5, number 28. Cyclops Volume, I think this is Volume 3, number 12. And Captain Marvel Volume, uh, I think it's Volume 8, number 14. Now, who does the writing for this book? Well, the um, there are a bunch of writers on here. Now, the uh, the Alpha One Shot, that's written by Sam Heffries. He also writes uh, Guardians Team Up, and he writes uh, um, the Guardians Team Up issue and the issues of Legendary Star Wars. Okay. Brian Michael Bendis, on the other hand, uh, well, Sam Heffries writes the Alpha and Omega one shots in Legend of Star Lord and the Guardians team up. Uh, Bendis writes all new X Men and Guardians of the Galaxy. Gary Duggan obviously write, was writing Nova at the time. Gus Johanek does Captain Marvel. And John Lehman does uh, the final issue of Cyclops. Now, Cyclops is the only series that actually ends with this very storyline. And yes, it involves this big, humongous mirror. Um, show up some artwork in here. Yeah. Yeah, it varies on who the artist is. Depends on whatever issue you're in. Um, on the back cover, which is, I think this is covered issue 24, this cover is actually a partially a lie. Because there are certain characters who appear in this cover who do not appear in the storyline. Uh, for one thing, uh, Venom is absent in this storyline. I do not know where the heck he is. Uh, Angela is not here either. Neither is Cosmo the Space Dog, Howard the Duck, and uh, Mantis. Yeah, they're all absent from this very story. So, yeah. Oh, and the Watcher is definitely absent from this story. And there is a very big reason for that. The guy's dead. He got killed off prior to this very storyline. I'm not sure why Venom is kind of absent from it, but... Yeah, he didn't show up anywhere in the storyline, but... Angela, the reason why she's not here in the storyline, because she's got her own series. Uh, Mantis, barely, you only show up for like one issue of this particular volume, and that's it. Howard is off doing whatever, and Cosmo just showed up recently. No, but, but yeah, the whole thing is hunting her for this thing. Now, there is some stuff that happened in this particular storyline that is still being affected in the Marvel Universe today. Like, during the course of the storyline, Helia... The home world of the Kree is destroyed, but Ronan does himself. Ronan Cues does does survive that, because even Brian Michael Bendis knows, do not kill off a badass character like Ronan the Accuser. That would take off Stan Lee if you kill off that awesome character. I had nothing much to say for Lee Pierce. Lee, Lee Pierce is an okay performance as in the Guardian of the Galaxy, but this is this is not Guardian of the Galaxy film. This is the comic. Now, Beast himself does play a role in here. Um, pretty much what, pretty much the whole point of this storyline is it would be only on the pages of Legendary Star-Lord. Now, the only things that still be affected to this day is, like, Destruction of Hela. Um, though this was coming afterwards, but they since broken up. I think they got back together, thanks to the last issue of Guardians of Star-Lord. Kitty Pride, uh, get, Kitty Pride and Star-Lord get engaged. Yeah. In the final issue of this very storyline, Star-Lord proposes to Kitty Pride. That was a very happy moment. And it was very rare to see um, an actress or something like that. Cyclops comes back to Earth, Kitty Pride stays in space, and she's still in space this very day. So basically, you swapped out Cyclops for Kitty Pride. Kitty, I did like the fact in the most recent story arc for for Star Lord that she was a supporting character in that particular title, and now she's part of the Guardians, so that's so good. Um, the Black Vortex itself, uh, there's this immortal being who spent 12 billion years looking for this thing, and took it, and as far as I know, it's not been seen since then. This storyline is just really good. Um, it was a shame. Last year for Marvel to have the advertised the stuff for had this particular storyline 
buried under the advertisement of Star of Secret Wars. That is the only negative thing toward it is that this is an underrated story. I mean, if you if you talk about underrated stories last year, this is like one of the top ones right here. This is, storyline is just so good that I highly recommend people who are who who are fans of the Guardians of the Galaxy, who are fans of the X Men, pick up this particular trade and read it. You would love the storyline, but I recommend picking up a few things first. Now, it there is some advertisement here for both for Guardians of the Galaxy and, of course, um, all new X Men. Now, this came out one year after the Trial of Jean Grey. Unlike in the Trial of Jean Grey, where it took a long time for something to happen, this one, you have a lot of stuff happening. And unlike Trial of Jean Grey, which didn't affect Guardians of the Galaxy after a storyline wrapped up, this one. This one is effective and it doesn't lead into some other storyline it wraps up really nicely it there's some threads that do lead to the summer i was like well in the case of legendary star lord uh the title got canceled the title ended with the next issue uh nova continued for a few more issues uh captain marvel uh continued for one more issue for it was abruptly ended and re re relaunched nova got relaunched as well guardians of the galaxy Continue for another two issues before it was relaunched. Um, same thing with all new X-Men. Two issues, back number one. The only one that you can say, as for uh, Guardians Team Up, what about that one? That one continued for another seven issues before it was ended. But the Guardians Team issue is not exactly something we're here about. It, it's a really nice issue. It's just the Guardians going to hell and trying to convince uh, Creed to be on their side, take on the Black Vortex. And you're probably wondering, who the who is the main antagonist of the story? <laughs> okay, the main antagonist of the story is Star-Lord's father, Jason of Spartax, a.k.a. Mr. Knife. Yep, that was something he was calling himself in the Legendary Star-Lord series, which I got handed to Sam Heffries for making him a very awesome villain. Um, he was pretty much, he appeared in... I mean, if you read all the issues of Legendary Star-Lord, the guy appears in every single issue. Which, I got handed to Heffries for making him a um, a regular villain for the series, and Kitty Pride a supporting character in it. Uh, even though more half the time she's appearing via hologram, and yes, that is also um, going on pages of all new X-Men, where Kitty Pride is talking to uh, Star-Lord via hologram. So, high recommendation to people who are who 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 uh who 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 love the Guardians of the Galaxy, and who love the X Men, pick this trade up. You would love it. It's awesome. It's epic. It's cosmic. And unlike Trial of Jean Grey, which did very little afterwards, this one is still being affected. Okay. Nine out of ten, nine point five out of ten for that awesome storyline. All right, that's it for this episode. Stay tuned for the next episode, which will be two sixty three and double shot one hundred ninety five. Okay, till then, see you there. Bye.